Good afternoon, everyone. Adria, you have the floor. Welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for coming to this uh, webinar today. I am, we're thrilled for you to be here. I'm Adria Baker, and I work at Rice University in Houston, Texas. I'm the Associate Vice Provost for International Education. Rice is um, a comprehensive, private, highly selective uh, university in Houston, and we are um, so grateful to be a part. Bratech, I'm on the board of directors of Bratech, and here I am. I'm so sorry it took me a while to pop out to see you all. Um, and I have the wonderful honor of um, introducing my friend and colleague from Rice University, Dr. David Vassar. And Dr. Vassar is the Assistant Dean for Professional and Corporate Programs um, at Rice University's Glasgow School for Continuing Studies. His talk, as you know, is university certificates, what they are and why they are a valuable credential. And David has just a wealth of uh, experience. I just want to say that because of his experience on the board with Bratech many years ago, he introduced and helped introduce Rice to, to Brazil, uh, Bratech, and what the, the wonderful benefits are to connect us with Brazil. Um, he is a native Texan. He, enjoy, he has a 20-year career working in commercial and higher education throughout the world with global, focusing on global partnerships. With an MBA at Texas a from Texas A&M and a PhD in Latin American literature from University of Virginia. And he has served in various administrative, senior administrative roles at Rice University as well as the University of Texas system um, with the a university leadership and was also an academic director for um, US Mexico activities um, at the University of Texas. His current role um, right now is, is a wide range of portfolio of professional development programs, and he will talk to you about many of those. Nonprofit, for-profit, um, and they include things such as financial services, business communication, marketing, management, leadership, paralegal services, computer and data science, engineering, and nonprofit management. Um, but before he was working in higher education, he was, he was also in oil and gas uh, production. He, was a, a petro, he worked with a petrochemical service company and IT consultancy. And his favorite, though, was a brewery. Um, he, as I mentioned, he was served on the board and enjoys traveling uh, in Brazil. He speaks beautiful Portuguese. And his favorite thing, one of his favorite things is eating pau de queijo. But I think that we share that with him. So David, David, thank you so, so much for being here with us. Thank we on behalf of the board and on behalf of um, Ratek, we are just delighted to hear what you have to say. So um, I'm gonna let you take it away. Um, briefly, I just wanna say that there are, will be question and answer. People can put questions in the chat um, and then we'll get to those after your talk. Okay, David, thank you. Thank you, Adrian. Thanks so much for the, the kind introduction. <clears throat> it's wonderful to be able to call you a, a colleague for so many years now at Rice and it's, uh, we, it's been in fun working together. Um, I have a PowerPoint I'm gonna share in just a minute when I get the chance. Um, I, and I also wanna thank Bratech for, for this opportunity. Um, as Adrian mentioned, I was on the board a while back and um, it really uh, was such a pleasure to work with the board and the, the organization as well as our partners in Brazil and in, in, in the Texas region. So it's, uh, really such a, a benefit to Houston. Okay, here we go. Can you all see the screen? Great. Um, well, as you know, this presentation is um, about university certificates. That's what the, the title of the, of the talk is. Um, and, uh, and we're gonna talk a lot about that today, but I first want you to focus on the image that you see in front of you. Many of you, if you've been to Rice, you know that this is not Rice University. Normally I would maybe start with a, a beautiful photo of Rice and, and um, uh, it is a beautiful place to visit if you, if you ever get the chance. But this photo I was struck by because um, if you look carefully, you'll notice that there, there are several different ways to get from the bottom of the photo up to the top of the photo, up towards, I guess it's a castle or a fortress or something. Um, and that they take different shapes and, um, and some of them are more direct than others. And some of them uh, look maybe easier than others. Some of them look more difficult. There's some that maybe look like they weren't supposed to be pathways, but now they are pathways. Um, and so I, I think about this image when I think about what university certificates provide. 
<clears throat> which is um, alternative pathways to attaining educational goals and, and professional goals in particular in, in the case of the offerings that I'll, I'll talk about today. And so keep that word and that maybe this image in your mind. And in particular, you see the one that meanders sort of elegantly up the hill. Uh, it might take a little bit longer, um, but you see a little bit more and it's, a, you know, it's maybe a, a, it's better carved out than some of the others. You might think about that as a traditional uh, degree program where it takes a little bit longer, you have a little bit more foundation, um, but it, you get to the top of the hill. And you, if you think about some of these other pathways, they might be uh, some of the certificates that we'll talk about today. So just keep that in mind as, as we move along. Um, as, as we go, um, we're gonna talk about what are the factors of growth and educational pathways? Why are there so many certificates now? And why is this uh, sometimes a confusing, um, a confusing uh, topic to, to understand? Um, and uh, then we'll talk about what are, what are the various university cred credentials and what are certificates in particular. And then we'll take a look at Rice and kind of what we offer here at Rice University. And then it, to finish off, I wanted to give you a set of questions to think about as you try to understand what, whether a certificate is right for you or whether you maybe another pursuit would be better for you in terms of your uh, educational achievement. And so first of all, um, there are many, many options in terms of educational pathways. It's a little bit like if you go to the grocery store and all you want really is just a nice sort of standard jar of spaghetti sauce, but you get there and suddenly realize that there are 50 or more different options and it, it suddenly gets more complicated. That's a little bit what it looks like sometime if you were to search online for university certificate, you would get lots, you'd get a lot more than 50 options. Um, and so today we're gonna talk a little bit about why there are so many options. And I'm just, there, there are probably more than five, but I'm gonna throw out five reasons that, um, that, there, that the growth in certificates has really taken off over the last couple of decades. Um, the first is the 100 year life. Now this sounds exciting. Um, many of us, uh, I don't know if we want to live 100 years, um, but, but if you look closely at this, this is talking about babies who were born in 2007. Um, but it's pretty clear that uh, people are living longer and they're going to continue to live longer as we as we move forward. Um, but if you have children or grandchildren that were born uh, on or around 2007, you can expect um, that they will have, uh, the probability is that they will have very long lives. Um, so what, what does this mean? Well, it means if you're living more years, you will essentially, at least one aspect is you'll have more financial need to, to pay for you know, a place to live and food to eat and things to do, um, which might require more work, more years of work. We might have to start working beyond our early to mid 60s and maybe work uh, longer into life. And in order to keep our sanity and to keep ourselves interested in our work, we might even change careers over time. Or maybe our careers, maybe the careers we have initially will go away and we might have to reinvent ourselves with a new career. And so all of these factors around the 100 year life, and there's a book out they're called The 100 Year Life. I, I, it's a really interesting read and I would encourage you to, to read it. Um, it talks about a lot more implications than just educational implications. Um, but all of these things are pushing, are pointing to the fact that educational opportunity is not just something you take advantage of between the years 18 and 22, but it's something that we all will start to, to take it, need to take advantage of throughout the, the life cycle of our careers and in our own life cycles. Second is the, the pace of change in technology. This is not new to any of you, um, particularly those of you who, if you were working in 1975 and you, uh, you wouldn't have had a desktop computer, but if you knew about the computers that existed, um, or if you even go back, I think, I guess yesterday was the 52nd anniversary of the first step on the moon by, by humans. And um, if you saw pictures of the control room at Johnson uh, Space Center here and outside of Houston, you would see a room full of computers. Um, but if you look down at the, the phone that you probably have in your hand or, or near your hand, that phone has more processing power than those computers had in that room that sent people to space. Um, and so we've come an incredible distance since, uh, since even just 40 or 50 years ago. And as the futurist uh, Ray Kurzweil suggests, the 21st century will not be 100 years of progress. It'll be more like 20,000 years of progress. Now, maybe that's hyperbole, but, but he, I think he, he meant it sincerely. And uh, the elements that will lead to this are things like artificial intelligence, deep learning, robotics, all of these things that you see on the screen. And they're all gonna generate new technologies and new ways of doing work, new ways of living. Um, and they're gonna change the way we think about higher education as well. Um, 
this one is maybe more right in front of us right now, but the volatility of the job markets, really since 1997 with the Asian uh, financial crisis, all the way through the pandemic in 2021, we've had one series, or we've had a series of one crisis after another, whether it's the 9-11 the uh, economic downturn, the, um, the of course, the 2008 and financial global financial meltdown, and more recently, the, the global pandemic. There's been one crisis after another that have um, made the workforce in many ways more self-reliant. The gig economy has emerged out of this where people are working as contractors more and more often, and they're taking ownership, more ownership over their careers and looking for ways to have autonomy um, and independence in their careers. And so these are things that are all affecting higher education. And maybe one of the most important ones is are the demographic shifts. In 2025, we'll see the peak size of the high school graduating class in the United States. Um, and this is affecting how universities are thinking about their educational offerings. They're no longer going to be able to just depend on the right number of students applying to their undergraduate programs every year because that number, the pool is going to be diminishing over time after 2025. And many universities have already seen this. Um, uh, but it's also the effect of the, the generational shift. The baby boomers are no longer the largest living generation. Um, the millennials are, and they're driving educational enrollment right now, particularly in the non-traditional market, that is to say after 25 years old. Um, and the gen generation Z, um, or, um, which comes, which is essentially kids born from 1996 through 2010, depending on which list you look at, um, these, these students are really going to make some changes because they are not like they are not your your grandfather's student. Um, uh, they are uh, they are going to find their own way, and many of them are not interested in coming to traditional classrooms. They're interested in in alternative ways of educating themselves and and charting a path in their lives. Um, and just as a reminder, the non the non traditional student, as we've talked about them in the past, they make up seventy five percent of today's student population. So it's uh, non traditional is actually now the the, the most common form of student. So the, the traditional programs, the four-year degrees, the, the associate's degrees, and um, of course, graduate, graduate degrees, master's and PhD, these are not the, the bulk of the students that are studying in the United States right now. So, um, so we're really talking about this larger section of students. And then uh, as we know quite well in Houston, we are now living through one of the most, or the most socially, or uh, socioeconomically and racially diverse um, student populations ever in the United States. Um, here in Houston, we live in one of the most diverse cities in the country. And our, if you look at HISD or our, the surrounding um, I, uh, school districts, you'll see that this is the case. And this is also affecting how students think about their higher education. All of these factors point to another factor, which I think is sort of fundamental to, the, to this and understanding certificates. And it's the disaggregation or unbundling of education. Um, You'll have online providers um, of education. This is unbundling education from a place. So you no longer have to go to a, a campus and study. But the way I'm thinking about unbundling here is unbundling degree programs and cutting them up into smaller pieces so that people can take advantage of just the slices of an education that they want or need at a particular time. And this is called unbundling of, of degrees or unbundling of education. Um, any chemists out there might understand this slide here. I, uh, it, it just seemed like an interesting way to think about unbundling. This is a, a, a bromine, I think, particle that's un, unbundling a molecule that's there on the right. Um, so uh, that's about all I could say about that. But unbundling is a really important uh, factor right now. So how do we think about this at Rice? Um, all of these factors, they're, they're um, impacting higher education across the country and, and across around the world, really. Um, but at Rice, we this is forcing us and, and um, I wouldn't, shouldn't say forcing, but it's encouraging us to think about our educational offerings in a particular way. And that is two sides of the same coin. Um, and this coin, by the way, is a, it's a Greek drachma. And the coin on the right, you'll notice, uh, that owl looks a lot like the owl that's up in the, I don't know if you can see the shield at the top of the screen for Rice University, but the Athenian owl is Rice's mascot. And this is where it comes from, essentially, is uh, it was pervasive in Greek culture and particularly on the drug, on their, their coinage. So that's, if uh, it's a piece of trivia maybe for you, if, if you didn't know it already, this is the owl that, that, um, that Rice points to as its mascot. Um, but the two sides of the same coin are, the, what is the, the lifetime value of a student to the university in terms of 
uh, in terms of their intellectual capital, in terms of their visibility and success, and of course, in terms of also the um, the tuition that they might um, spend at the university in terms of the sustainability of the university. What is the lifetime value of the student to the university? But even more importantly is what is the lifetime value of the university to the student? Because if we're not able to provide this lifetime value, not just during two or four or six years of undergraduate or graduate work, but even beyond that, um, then we're not, we're not going to be sustainable one, but we're also not going to be providing the opportunity to our students that we that we need to be providing. And so this is this is how we think about edu professional education at Rice. Um, here you see that all of the schools at Rice that that um, play a, a, lot, a strong role in professional education at the university. The Glasscock School of Continuing Studies on the left, the Jones Graduate School of Business, the School of Engineering, Natural Sciences, Social Sciences, and Architecture. All of these um, schools at Rice provide. Uh, professional education, many times in graduate degrees, but uh, in the cases that we'll talk about today in non-credit um, certificates in ways that enhance the workforce of Houston uh, across the industrial base of our city. Now, now we start talking about the, the credentials themselves. Um, this is sort of a continuum of credentials from, uh, uh, in term, this is, I guess the, the trajectory you see from left to right is generally how one would have might take the order in which one might take these degrees if they no no one person usually would take all of these degrees but there are options for everyone the associate's degree which we don't offer at rice but it's a typically a two-year degree that you would find at houston community college or lone star college or san jacinto college um, these are two years degrees two-year degrees that are that provide some fundamental um, knowledge base and and writing and communication skills but then they also go into in depth into a particular skill set or trade. Um, then you have a bachelor's degree, which is the traditional four year degree. And then if you jump to the other side uh, of the of the rectangle there, you'll see graduate certificates, which is a fairly new uh, invention or, 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 or outcome of, of graduate education. <clears throat> but these are four credit uh, courses that they're usually about three or four courses that are bundled together in they're a specific area within a graduate discipline. So for instance, a computer science master's degree might pull out one section of that um, um, uh, infrastructure, you know, systems engineering or some, some piece of computer science and or cybersecurity and just focus a graduate certificate on cybersecurity. And the, the benefit of graduate certificates is that many times they can later be applied towards a master's, a full master's degree if you want to. You can try it out for 12 or 15 hours and then if you like that and you do well, then you can apply that towards a, ma a full master's degree. And then in some places you can also find a micro master's. At Rice, we don't offer a micro master's, but you'll see these online and they're essentially even, they're even smaller maybe than a graduate certificate, um, but they take out a slice of, of specialization from a broader master's degree. They unbundle it and package it in a smaller uh, credit bearing um, degree. So you'll notice, uh, so then everything inside of the box here are non-credit offerings, which is to say they they don't and cannot count toward, for the most part, count towards a, a, a credit bearing degree, a master's degree or any other degree for that matter. So you'll see digital badging, which are essentially just digital uh, markers that indicate that you have taken a course and have learned a certain set of skills. You can put it on your LinkedIn profile or you can put it on your digital resume and it um, it will link back to the actual curriculum that you took and give information about the specialization that you've taken. We offer this through some of our boot camps in, for instance, in data uh, analysis and visualization, you can get digital badging in those areas related to, uh, to, the, to that boot camp. A certificate, certificate of completion, certificate of achievement, a professional certificate and executive education. These are these are um, varying ways that we uh, signal the kind of uh, learning that has taken place in one of our certificate programs. A certificate of completion is merely one where you have come and you have sat in a class for the duration of the class. We don't assess your learning. There are no exams or quizzes, but you have the opportunity to learn from the instructor that's in the room. Certificate of achievement. Um, provide some assessment as well. So it, it uh, certifies that you have taken quizzes and exams and have passed the class at at least a minimum standard of, of achievement in order to gain the certificate. And then we have professional certificates, which uh, 
are oriented towards professional skill sets in particular industries. For example, um, we have a set of HR offerings that are oriented towards the SHRM or Society for Human Resource Management curriculum. And these are courses that, um, that provide you with a professional certificate. And then we, uh, and then finally, executive education. These are courses uh, or certificates and, and courses that can be, that are oriented towards um, leaders and managers in, in corporations. And we'll, I'll show you some of those in just a few minutes. Those are primarily offered through the, the business school here at Rice, but we also offer a select few at the, at the Glasscock School. So I'm starting to throw around a lot of um, vocabulary that maybe uh, aren't as clear as they could be. Some of this comes because, uh, I, I don't know if, you, if you've heard of it, but the University of Bologna was the, the first university established in the West, which, you know, it's, a, um, uh, it, it's not a very inclusive way of looking at it, but at least in terms of what influences the United States, it's the Western universities. In 1088 a, uh, AD, the University of Bologna was established. And many of our, you know, uh, our vocabulary, whether it's a, a provost or a vice provost or a, a dean or an assistant dean, these are terms that are that are archaic in many ways because they come from this thousand year tradition of universities. So all that is to say, sometimes we don't speak as clearly as we should in academia. So here is a list of, of words that I think would be useful to understand in the context of, of certificates. Um, first of all, a degree. A degree is uh, maybe what you're most familiar with, but this is an accredited program in an area of study that's two or more years. It can be associate's degree, that's two years or four, or, uh, or a master's degree or a doctorate. These are degrees that are accredited by an, an outside accrediting body um, through the university. A certificate, uh, which can be for credit or not for credit, but it's generally a specific, a specific skill or skills. It's less than a year and it's career oriented. Um, so it's a very, it's a, it's a limited set of skills or, or courses um, and it, that take you a, a limited amount of time to complete. A course is just a standalone offering that, um, as you can see, can range from a few hours to a few weeks. For credit means that it can be applicable towards a university degree. This is this is really important when you're looking at certificates or other educational opportunities. It's always important to know whether or not it can be applied towards a degree if if you want a degree. Sometimes you don't want or don't need a degree, and so that's not not as important. Uh, and so a non-credit program is one that cannot be applied towards a university degree. Um, a semester hour, you'll hear this thrown around, it's equivalent to one hour a week of instruction. So a typical undergraduate course, for instance, is a three hour course, which means you sit in class three hours per week during the semester. Which it, it, the reason it's confusing is because if you have a 15 week semester, that's actually a 45 hour course in terms of seat time, but it, they call it a three hour course. Uh, and then contact hour, which is what we work with most in continuing education. These are just the number of hours that you're actually in class. So if we say it's a 12 hour class, that means that it will take 12 hours of your time in class to complete the course. And then accreditation, I mentioned that in respect to, to degrees <clears throat> and, for, and credit bearing coursework. The accreditation is simply a certification by a government recognized entity. In our case at Rice, it's the, the Southern Association of Colleges and Schools or SACS, um, and they accredit all of our programs. We can talk more about that in the Q&A if you'd like, but these are important terms to understand. So now, what does the ecosystem at Rice look like for certificates? Um, I'll, the, I'll talk about the ones at the Glasscock School, and then in the next slide, we'll talk about the Jones School of Business. But at, at the Glasscock School, you'll see that these range across um, leadership, um, management, human resources, uh, technology, uh, paralegal studies, and um, I, th I think that's about all of these, and financial services, the certified financial planner. And they range uh, wi fairly widely. The leading self teams and system certificate is about a four day program. It's three smaller courses that are bundled together for this certificate. So it is a short, fairly short and um, intensive leadership training program uh, that, that one can take to, to sort of learn the fundamentals of leadership. Uh, leadership principles certificate is a slightly longer course, so it's it's a lot more self-reflective. You take assessments, and um, it's a, it's a it takes a little more of your time to complete, but it provides even a broader base uh, for leadership. 
uh, project management is a series of courses on different aspects of project management, including the PMP preparation for the uh, project management professional exam. And then I'm not going to, I won't go through all of them, but these are all certificates that can help you. Um, these are all non-credit certificates, so they don't count towards degrees, but they can give you, uh, they can either add to your skill set or they can deepen your skill set in a particular area in order to prepare you for whatever your professional challenge is or whatever your professional goals are at a particular time. We also at the Glasscock School offer professional development for uh, nonprofit leaders across the city and across the, the region really. And our Center for Education also provides many, many uh, professional development opportunities for teachers in the, in the region. Um, I'm focusing on the, the professional development ones at the top because those are, those are the ones that I oversee and the ones um, for which you can get a discount if you're a member of Bratech. And now at the, jo the Jones School of Business, they offer a wonderful set of executive education certificates. Um, and I, please note the, the contact information there at the bottom. Um, I don't oversee these programs, so I can't tell you a lot about them, but they are all very high quality. They're taught by Rice faculty from the Jones School. Um, and maybe this is an important distinction. These are all taught by Rice faculty at the Jones School. The ones here at the Glasscock School of Continuing Studies are taught by professionals from across the city. We've, we vet them, we interview them, and we, we're, we are, um, it's very important to us that they be both uh, good teachers as well as um, good practitioners of their trade or their, or their, uh, their technical area. Um, but they're not, they don't have an academic, the same ac academic background as the Jones School faculty will have. So that's one of the distinctions between the two, the two set of offerings. Um, but there's not a lot of overlap. There are a few places where there's some overlap, but, but by and large, the graduate school is, is um, a, a business is really interested in training uh, leaders in, in corporate uh, settings. So, but please contact uh, Zoran Perunovic if you have questions about those programs. So these are, these are some of the programs that we offer and, uh, and I would encourage you to explore them. Um, but a question you may have is, you know, why, why should I in the end enroll in a certificate program? And so there, there's several, re many reasons, but here are a few. One is you're an individual contributor, so you're not managing a group of people and you really just wanna get better at a particular skill or set of skills or, set or knowledge base. And so you might take, um, for instance, you might take uh, a digital skills bootcamp in order to learn how to analyze data better and visualize it in a way that your, that your boss may be asking you to do. Maybe you, uh, you're a, an analyst in a financial group and you, you need to learn how to uh, both uh, pull data from different sets of data and then visualize it and show it, you know, uh, present it to other people in compelling ways. That's an individual contr contributor skill set. Um, you might uh, have, you might be in a, in a profession where you need a licensure or a certification that's important for you. So we have continuing professional education for lic licensure, for, for instance, uh, uh, professional uh, engineers. Uh, we partner with the School of Engineering to provide uh, education in that space. Or you might need just a certification like a SHRM certification that I mentioned before, or the certified financial planning certification. These are things that we can help you attain by way of our educational programs. And then maybe you have foundational skills like communication or presenting um, or, or just basic business skills. These are other things that you can take a certificate program in in order to, to increase uh, your value to your organization. And then finally, the executive or managerial skills and knowledge. These are the ones primarily offered in the in the Jones Business School, uh, Business School, but also at the there are a few of these also at the Glasscock School. So if if any of these are are things that uh, for which you don't need a full degree, but you really want to concentrate on a certain set of skills, these are really uh, great ways to achieve those goals that you may have. Uh, another way to think about it, I was talking to a colleague yesterday here, and she she really, um, Mary Lynn Furneaux, she's my she's our one of our business development um, uh, partners here at the Glasscock School. She she presented me the difference uh, to me the difference between lattices and ladders, the things that we're trying to help the workforce of Houston and beyond uh, attain are not always just going up in one direction. Our that's not how our in real life that's not how our pathways at work function. Sometimes they do. Sometimes you just, you know, if you're, if you're a star, sometimes it just rises and you go up, you go up the ladder. But the majority of times, 
a professional pathway is about taking steps to the side, maybe even taking steps backwards um, before you go up. And so we think about producing a set of uh, certificates that allows people to navigate the lattice of their career in ways that will benefit them professionally, but also personally um, and help them find the right uh, job and industry um, that, that they want to, to be a part of. And so we think more about building lattices instead of just ladders. Um, so another uh, metaphor to think about today. So uh, I've given you lots of kind of background. I wanna give you some specific uh, possibilities so that you can sort of apply, you can think through how this might apply to a particular career um, <clears throat> or pathway. So one, let's imagine that, um, that a, young, a young woman has graduated with a, a computer science degree um, uh, from the regional university. I, I don't wanna be biased uh, from any university. And then they, uh, they work for a few years as a computer tech in a, in a financial services company. Um, they've seen lots of implementations uh, of computer systems come and go with the organization over, uh, over three or four years. And they finally realize, I wanna be more involved in implementing these systems. I don't wanna just help people with their day-to-day -day computer problems. And so she, would, she could come to the Glasscock School and take our project management certificate and then move into the into the implementation team within their organization in order to implement software or or other systems. She works in that role for a couple of years, and she realizes I actually like what the financial group, the fintech group, is doing over there. And that on the other side of the building, I don't want to just implement new new software across the company. I really want to work in the fintech group. And so she comes back to Rice and she takes the fintech boot camp which allows her to get her foot in the door in that other group and to work in the FinTech group at the financial services company. After a couple of years, um, she starts to, she gets promoted and she's managing a couple of people, a small team. Um, but she, what she notices is, is that the people who really move up within the company or within the industry need um, graduate degrees. And so she wants to get her feet wet. So she takes a graduate certificate in computer science. So this is the first two programs were non-credit. This one is a four credit degree or certificate. She that helps her sort of her credibility and her and just the, her technical savvy in the workplace. So then she then uh, she sees that she's on the right track, but she needs a little bit more management and leadership uh, training. And so she comes to the Jones School and takes the leadership accelerator followed by the management incubator. And she is um, really put on the fast tra track and she's now a director at, at the company. But then what she finally notices is that she wants to be a VP, she has to have the master's degree. And so she comes back to Rice and she applies her graduate certificate in computer science towards the master's degree. And then she's able to complete the master's degree in a much, uh, a much quicker time frame. And after getting the master's degree, she's able to attain the VP role that she had aspired to for, uh, for, for the last several years. And so this is one pathway that you could think about. You know, you can plug in the individual, their circumstances and, and what they, um, the challenges that they might encounter. But depending on where you are in your career or in your life, you will have different needs um, in order to enhance your work, uh, your, your performance at work, enhance your value to the organization, and also to enhance your personal satisfaction in what you're doing. And it doesn't always require a for credit or a not for credit program. Sometimes the not for credit program is exactly what you need. And sometimes you what you really need is to build towards a degree, in which case you would want to look at the for credit programs. Um, I don't want to go on for too long. So I'm going to I had a couple of other possibilities, but I will skip those for right now. Um, we can come back to them if you'd like. But some to kind of close here, some questions for you to consider as you think about what kinds of programs you you, you should or would want to take at a university. One, the most important perhaps is what are my professional goals? Do I wanna move up in the organization? Do I wanna to transition to another career? Do I wanna start over and do something completely different? How much time do I have? <laughs> if you have a family, uh, you know, with, with parental, you know, with kids that you have responsibility for, or if you're taking care of your parents, whatever your situation might be, that's gonna, that's gonna uh, impact how much time you can dedicate towards your education. Um, and so that's an important question to have in mind. And it's really, you really need to be realistic about this because uh, to do any of these programs is it takes a real commitment 
Uh, and so it's important to, to have a reality check about how much time you actually have to commit. Um, another question uh, is, do I need specific skills or do I need a broad tool set of skills? This is another way of saying the next question, which is, does my industry or company require a graduate degree to achieve my goals? A, a graduate degree will provide you a broad set of skills um, that many times also take into account theoretical um, um, theoretical problems as well as research problems. Um, they are very they are um, they are uh, career oriented. Our master's degrees, but they will have a foundation in in research and in theory. So if if you need that broad set of uh, skills and and knowledge in order to move up within your company, then a then you might lean towards a graduate degree rather than a certificate. Um, do I want to work for myself or for a company? If you want to work for yourself, maybe you want to go uh, and do a boot camp in um, in uh, full stack coding, which would allow you to build websites and start your own company if you wanted to. Or you might want to take a CFP certificate and become a certified financial planner, and you can work for yourself. But if you want to work within a company, there are going to be different parameters and different needs that the company and you would have to negotiate. And this is a the next question is one that is really important, particularly today when there's so many possibilities in terms of modalities for certificates and education. How do I learn best? Is it through live in-person instruction? Do I need to go to a classroom? Or can I uh, learn just as well online or even asynchronously? Uh, and then finally, do I need or want a larger professional network? Graduate programs that are cohort-based are programs where you're going to meet people and get to know them well and build relationships that will help you throughout your career. And so that's that's something that that I think two-year degrees in terms of graduate study can make a bit that's a, a big difference as compared to shorter, quicker, more focused um, certificate programs. So these are a, a few of the questions to consider, um, and I, I would encourage you to. To, to ask yourselves these questions, but also um, to ask us about it or others. If you're looking at different universities, I would ask uh, the people there about what they think about what you what the particular programs might be good for in the marketplace. So I think I will stop there. Um, I'm so happy to be here with you today and, and thank you again for, for allowing me to share this with you and look forward to any questions that you may have. Uh, thank you, David. Uh... Um, this is Cecilia. I'm going to be working on uh, moderating this sure. uh, Q&A. Uh, most of the questions uh, posed uh, right now, I, I believe that you already answered. So actually, I'm not going to lie. I, I made myself a few, most of them, because I thought that the, the topic was so interesting. I, I'm interested myself on, on a certificate. So, but the one is how companies are accepting such certificates. Like, mm -hmm. how should I present the certificates? Because you, you said that I ran... A bunch of them, and how how can you know you're going to use this in the real life in an interview right. or in your CV? Sure, I, I think it's important that that you know how to talk about the the specific skills that these certificates um, uh, allow you to learn and to bring to the table. Um, when you're talking to an employer, you want to make it clear to them that you didn't just sit in a chair and watch. Uh, uh, for instance, our boot camps are very experiential. You don't, you can't just sit back and watch. You have to participate in project teams. You have to work with multiple new technologies and platforms. And um, so, I think it's that's why digital badging sometimes is a great tool because it allows you to really specify the skills that you bring to the table. And you can, um, and and that's that's the way to get you know to um, to convince an employer or potential employer that that it's not just a piece of paper, but it's actually something that that has changed the way that you're able to do your work. Uh, perfect, thank you. So another thing you told about, like there is a, a, consi a considerable commitment of time. Mm -hmm. So, but how does it work like outside of the class? So it's not only class time, right? In front of the computer or sitting right. in a chair, but outside of the time. And in terms of the glass call, would it be like pass or fail? You're gonna grade something, how's gonna that work? Right, so it'll depend a little bit. Um, the for instance, our uh, our CFP program. For instance, if you want to become a certified financial planner, um, these are the, they're pass fail. Um, uh, each there are seven different courses within the certificate, um, and you have to pass all of them in order to gain the whole certificate. So there's there's a, a quite a bit of t outside study required in order to be successful in those programs, uh, in many of these programs, 
And so um, a, an organization, I mean, a, a, a university should provide you with that information. So the course might be 12 hours or it might be 95 hours, depending on what it is in terms of the seat time in the class. But the university should also tell you how much time outside of class is it going to require. And you should, if they don't tell you up front, you should definitely ask that question because it's a really important aspect of the commitment. But it should be, it should be present on their website. It should tell you on the website how much time that course is going to take. Thank you. Um, what about changing a career path, mm -hmm. right? You talk about this 100-year life now, so you can go for different careers. Sure. Uh, you, you, you kind of presented a little bit on how this girl that just graduated and he changed, but what if I want to do a, like a 800, a 100, 180 degree mm -hmm. change? Yeah. How, how can I use it? Is this a good way to start? How can I work on that? Sure. Well, I mean, there are a couple of different ways. I mean, I, you could imagine somebody who, uh, um, uh, thinks about, uh, well, there are a couple of different places where this might happen. Where we've seen it happen a lot is where um, executives from companies or people, maybe not executives, but people who've worked, been in the workforce for 15 or 20 years, um, so they might be executives, they decide really what they want to do is um, mentor and coach people. They don't really want to do the sort of the, the, the finance work or the marketing work that maybe they once did. And so there, there's a program at the Jones School called Lead, uh, it's called uh, Coach Rice. Um, it's at the Door Institute uh, for New Leaders. And Coach Rice is a fantastic way to bring whatever your professional background is to the table, come into this program. It's, a, it's a, about a five or six month program um, that allows you to um, get the, the educational hours required in order to be certified as a professional coach. And we've seen this happen over and over again, that, that people, once they get to a certain part of their career, they might want to turn around and give back to people, I mean, and be paid for it, but they want to give back to people, not just work for the corporation. And so that's a coach, a professional coaching. It also gives them a lot of independence. They're able to work on their own, work on their own time schedule. Um, and so that's one way. Um, you also have people who, who maybe studied finance uh, in college, but don't, they work for a few years in finance, but realize that's not really, they need to work with people more. They want to, they want to have a more sort of dynamic um, work experience. And so they come back and they do a, the CFP program. And uh, that's one where you need, a, you need a modicum of financial or accounting background in order to really excel. Although it's not required, but, it, but it's really useful in order to, to, to get the certification. Um, those are just a couple of examples. Paralegal studies is another where, where people who, who have, let's say they have a, a, um, a history degree, not to pick on, or I'll say a literature degree, because that was my degree. Um, and they're not sure what to do with a literature degree. They don't want to be an assistant dean somewhere. So they decide that they want to go back and get a paralegal studies certificate, work as a paralegal. And maybe a next step would be to go to law school if they realize that they really enjoyed that. But uh, we, our paralegal studies program, our CFP program, and the door, the, the Coach Rice program at the Jones School are three possibilities for people who are really looking to do something you know, relatively radically different um, in terms of transition. Uh, thank you. Uh, what about potential employers? Do potential employers recognize value and or value of certificates versus traditional degrees? How how is this working? Yeah, I mean, I think um, it depends on the on the industry a little bit. Uh, I think in the tech industry, they absolutely do. Um, uh, in more traditional industries, I think it's a slower uh, transition. Um, but again, I think it's about really articulating what the certificate helps you bring to the company and, and what you've learned in the certificate. It's not just about, you know, putting your resume out there and hoping somebody notices. Um, it's, uh, it's articulating both in the resume and in your cover letter and in your conversations with, with industry, um, what that, how that enhances your profile as a, as a potential uh, employee. So you just, a matter of uh, emphasizing in terms of skills instead mm -hmm. of just the degree instead of just it's more like what i can do and not like what the paper that i have in my wall says right that's right that's exactly right yep um what about uh, people from other countries for example is it possible for people from brazil 
running a certificate from RISE? Do, uh, do you have like uh, programs remotely? How did that work? Yes, we, we do. Not, not all of our programs are online, but obviously after this last year, many more of them are online now than were before. I, almost all of our, our um, major programs are online at least, at least once a year. Um, I'm trying to think if there are any that aren't. The only ones that, that we may not have online as often are the, the communications uh, offerings, whether it's public speaking or, or um, digital marketing. Um, although I think that one's still online. Um, so there, there are a few that we're not going to normally offer online, but the, the majority of our programs are both in person and online at this point. So, so yes, uh, and, um, absolutely yes. Uh, and one more question. Does Glasgow, because you gave me a lot of, uh, there are a few schools at RISE, uh, you mm -hmm. talked about Glasgow, noticed that all of them are non-credit, like, so does Glasgow does not offer any certificates that have four credit classes, right? Um, that, so not in my uh, department. We, in our education, Center for Education, we do offer um, some four credit certificates, or we're, we're about to. Um, and we offer the Master's in Liberal Studies, which is a four credit degree at the Glasscock School. Um, but, but the certificates that we offer are largely not uh, yet. We're, we have a couple, um, Rice is a fairly traditional university and that, you know, and that, that's served it very well over, over the hundred years it's been here. Um, it's just starting to look at um, offering more graduate certificates that are for credit and the Glasscock School will be participating in that. But, but I can't tell you today that we have them because they're still in process, but that's coming, that is coming. Thank you. Uh, thank you, David, for the presentation. I think it was very interesting and it, it actually opened an idea what actually is happening. Like we said, a lot of things are happening right now. So I'm mm -hmm. going to pass it over to Adria so we can have our final remarks. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you. I'm very, very grateful to have um, Dr. David Vassar with us today. Um, he has such a wealth of knowledge and I think I learned, I, I learned so much about the specific uniqueness of each one of these uh, certificates and, and specialized programs and, and how you can, they, you can use them and you get the help to progress your career. And it's, it's just fantastic. Uh, there's so many programs in the Glasscock School. And I want to mention that many of you may know people who want to study English. They have the intensive English program, a fantastic intensive English program. Many right. of you all who, it's not certificate programs, but they're, they're different. Mm -hmm. um, they also have some language programs. So that may be interesting to, to some of our, our audience. Absolutely. Um, and then I want to just invite people because since we talked um, about certificate programs and what they mean and why they're important, we also offer, of course, as you know, Rice has an, it's an academic university. It has the bachelor's, the master's, the PhD, and um, they do have within those programs some academic um, specialties there with some cert certifications inside those majors. And so we're going to talk about why would you, why do people want to get a degree in the United States? And that will be why a U.S. degree, August 31st, that's a Tuesday. It'll be on at four o'clock Central Standard Time. And uh, we're delighted because we have... Um, one of the lead people in, in Brazil on education with Education USA, Kita um, Moraconi will be with us. She'll be one of the speakers. I'll be speaking about RICE and, and more kind of programs in general. She will be speaking um, about out, outreach and, and what why, why to get a, a degree in the United States. And we'll have one of our PhD students uh, from Rice, from Brazil, who will be speaking. So I hope you'll come to that and please invite people from, you know, all over because we, we really, really welcome Brazilian students um, to come here. We have a lot of students and scholars coming and we want to always encourage that. That is a really important priority for Rice. So um, again, thank you very, very much, um, Dr. David Vassar for speaking to us from the Glasscock School. Cecilia, thank you so much for moderating this and making sure that um, things kind of keep on track and getting the questions and answers going. Um, with that, I think we'll just close. And uh, thank you, Bratek, for this opportunity for us to speak. And uh, it's just an honor to work with um, this amazing Bratek and the outreach they're doing in so many sectors um, of, of our world. Thank you so much.